In this video, we're going to consider the effects of a harmonically oscillating perturbation on the transitions of a quantum system. Uh, the reason for this is that oscillating perturbations are actually very commonly used in practice, particularly since they are essentially a model for electromagnetic radiation or light. And a lot of experiments in atomic and molecular physics involve shining light of some sort on uh, atoms or molecules. It's also a bit more general than that. We can, in principle, express any time-dependent perturbation by a superposition of harmonically oscillating functions, uh, thanks to the results of Fourier series or Fourier transforms. So this is a, a very useful case to, to consider. So for convenience, we're going to write this in a slightly odd way, but our uh, time dependent perturbation is going to be two times delta v hat cosine omega t for time between zero and some final time tf. So we're applying the perturbation during this time and it's zero otherwise. This delta v is a time independent uh, operator. It could depend on the position. I won't write that down explicitly. And uh, omega is the angular frequency of the oscillation. Uh, so omega is bigger than zero. And technically speaking, this can be a function of position. This two over here is going to help us later on uh, keep some of the expressions a bit simple or simpler. Right, so looking again at the same situation, so if we're in some state ket i, when we turn on the perturbation and we wanna know what the probability is of being in some state f at some later time uh, tf, so at the end of our perturbation. Um, and again, each one of these states has energy ei for the state ket i and ef for the state Ket F. Then the probability amplitude goes from zero to TF our matrix element of this operator over here. The oscillating component of our perturbation and then the complex exponential um, from our expression for the for this coefficient, right? So once again, this is just this matrix element. We're assuming that uh, this is time independent, so we can take it out of the integral. So we're left with delta VFI IH bar, integral between zero to TF. And now I'm going to re-express this cosine in terms of complex exponentials. And that's how this factor of two goes away. So uh, the first complex exponential from here multiplied with this factor gives us this first term over here. Then the second part of the complex exponential of the cosine gives you this second term. All right, carrying out this integration. Uh, 
Uh, we're left with something that's a little cumbersome, but we'll break it down and interpret it shortly. And as, as usual, you're encouraged to verify these results for yourself to make sure that uh, you understand where they're coming from. All right, so this is our final expression for uh, the probability amplitude of being in some state F at some time TF due to uh, harmonically oscillating perturbation. Okay, and like I said, this expression is a little uh, difficult to interpret, but we're going to uh, look at a particular case. We're going to look at a case where the angular frequency of the perturbation, omega, uh, has been tuned to roughly match the uh, energy difference between the two states we're considering. So between cat i and cat f. So uh, the reason for that is because again, this omega fi, we had to find that as the energy difference between our two states divided by h bar. Uh, when we look at this particular case, this is something that we can experimentally do. We can choose a different wavelength of light. Um, there's going to be two uh, predictions of important physical effects from this formula. Namely, uh, in one case, we're going to uh, predict the phenomenon of absorption of energy from the perturbation. And we're also going to uh, predict the effect of stimulated emission or the, uh, the perturbation will induce a transition between states, um, between a higher, higher energy state and a lower energy state. So we'll uh, begin looking at that in the next video.